Welcome, this is Ms. Teresa here at the Oprah Public Library. I'm here for another virtual story time, and today it's all about the color orange. We are doing the summertime theme, Reading Colors Your World, so I thought I'm going to pick a color, orange. What is orange? The first thing that I think of is the orange that we eat. Do you like oranges? I do, especially orange juice. What other things can we eat or think of what is orange? What can be orange? A lot of people think fall, but the season of fall, because we think of pumpkins, right? Um, also, we have the leaves turn orange in the fall. They fall off the trees. A lot of them turn orange or yellow or red, but orange could be a fall color. What else can we eat that's orange? Carrots? A lot of people like carrots. What else can you think of that's orange? Hmm, sweet potatoes. What else? Maybe cantaloupe. Did you ever eat cantaloupe? That's really good. Also, what kind of animals are orange? Can you think of any creatures or animals that are orange? Well, we happen to have some of these here at the library. If you come around, you'll see in our fish tank, we have goldfish. They call them goldfish, but don't you think they should be called orange fish? I do. Very pretty. And what other animal can be orange? Have you ever seen an orange cat? This is a pretty cat, I think. Meow, meow. What about a fox? They have a nice orange color. Also, one of my favorite things to, I was inspired by for this story time is my favorite butterfly. The monarch butterfly is a beautiful orange, and I've seen a lot of them just today flying around outside. Another beautiful creature that's the color orange, and of course, we can't forget flowers. Many flowers are orange, and that's why I wore my special orange flowered shirt today. So there you go. Many other things I'm sure you can think of that are the color orange. My first story is about a cat. We just talked about a cat that can be orange. And this is about an orange cat named Tippy Toes. The name of the story is Where is Tippy Toes? And this is by Betsy Lewin. And I'm reading it with permission from the author. Where is Tippy Toes? Everyone knows where Tippy Toes is when the sun is up and the day is his. The mouse in his hole knows the soft pit pat of Tippy Toes' steps on his welcome mat. He looks like he wants that mouse, right? But nobody knows where Tippy Toes goes. There he is when the night is alight with firefly shows. Everyone knows where Tippy Toes goes to escape the squirt of the garden hose. There he goes. Cats don't like to get wet, I don't think. And everyone knows that purring snore <coughs> when Tippy Toes naps in a dresser drawer. That silly cat. And everyone knows, but they don't know why, he tippy-toed through the blueberry pie. But nobody knows where tippy-toes goes when the moon is full and the night wind blows. Does wise owl know, do you suppose? Nobody knows where tippy toes creeps when the darkness falls and the whole world sleeps. Where is he? Except me. Meow, meow. My cute little tippy toes. I hope you enjoyed that one. We just talked about our orange 
cat, tippy toes. What is a large cat? What else is in the cat family, but it's big, it's striped. Do you know what animal I'm talking about? Did I hear somebody say tigers? <gasps> you got it. One, two, three, four, five. We've got five tigers. So, deep in the jungle, what did I hear? Five ferocious tigers roaring loud and clear. Roar, said the tigers. Scat, said I. And one ferocious tiger ran away. Bye-bye. Deep in the jungle, what did I hear? Four ferocious tigers roaring loud and clear. Roar, said the tigers. Scat, said I and one of those ferocious tigers ran away. Goodbye. What do we have left? One, two, three. Deep in the jungle, what did I hear? Three ferocious tigers roaring loud and clear. Roar, said the tigers, and scat, said I, and one ferocious tiger ran away. Bye-bye. What do we have left, everyone? One, two. Deep in the jungle, what did I hear? Two ferocious tigers roaring loud and clear. Roar, said the tigers. Scat, said I, and one of those tigers ran away. Bye-bye. How many do we have left now? One, just one is left. Deep in the jungle, what did I hear? One ferocious tiger roaring loud and clear. Roar, said the tiger. Scat, said I, and that last ferocious tiger ran away. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed that. Let's do our open shot of one. I haven't done that in a while before our next book. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Put them in your lap. Creep them in. Crawl them right up to your chin. Open your mouth, but don't put them in. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your lap. Ready for the next story? I think I am. This is called Little Owl's Orange Scarf. I know it's not scarf weather right now, but I thought I, I wanted to share this one, and you'll find out why. Not everyone loves the color orange. Let's find out about this one. This is by Tatiana Feeney, and it's called Little Owl's Orange Scarf, and I'm reading it with permission from the publisher. Little Owl lived with his mommy in a tree house on the edge of the city park. He loved adding numbers, eating ice cream, and riding his scooter. Whee! He usually loved surprises, but he did not love his new scarf. It was itchy. It was too long and it was far, far too orange. You need to wear your new scarf, said Mommy. It'll keep you nice and warm. Hmm. I'll, little Al tried very hard to lose his new scarf. But Mommy always found it. You'll need to wear this scarf today, said Mommy. It's your class visit to the zoo. Well, Little Al came home from the zoo with all sorts of stories. He talked about the elephant and the lion and the alligator and the giraffe. But Little Al came home from the zoo without his scarf. Uh-oh. Mommy called the zoo. Nobody had found his scarf. Never mind, she said. We can make another scarf. And this time, we will do it together. 
I think Little Owl liked this plan. The yarn shop was more exciting than Little Owl expected. Look at all the colors, a lot of oranges, but what does he choose? After a lot of hard work, Little Owl's scarf was finished. Yay! It was soft, it was just long enough, and it wasn't orange. Little Owl loved it. Especially on visits to the zoo. Look who got his scarf. Just perfect, nice and long too. I like that story a lot. I hope you did too. Our last story of the day is called The Birthday Fish. I know we talked about the fish we have here at the library. Well, this is about another fish that looks orange to me. This is called The Birthday Fish by Dan Yaccarino, and I'm reading with permission from the publisher. It starts with Cynthia loved ponies. All she could think about was ponies, 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 ponies. Look at all that. Every birthday, Cynthia wished for a pony, and every birthday, she got something else. This year, when Cynthia blew out the candles and made her wish, she just knew things would be different. She would get a pony, and she would name him Marigold. After eating some cake, Cynthia ran to open her presents. When she saw the gift from her parents, she thought, hmm, it must be a very small pony. What do you think? I don't know. Well, but it wasn't. It was a goldfish. Oh boy. Well, Cynthia was so upset, she took the goldfish and started to pour it down the drain. Oh, please don't do that, said a little voice. Cynthia looked around. Oh, please don't dump me down the drain, the little voice spoke again. Huh, it was the goldfish talking. Cynthia told him she wanted a pony, not a goldfish. Every year she wished for a pony when she blew out the candles on her birthday cake. Every year she put a pony on her Christmas list, but no matter how good she was, she never got her pony. I am a magical fish, said the little fish, and I will give you what you wish for if you will take me to a lake and set me free. Cynthia wished for two ponies, but the fishbowl, she put the fishbowl in her toy stroller and set off. The stroller hit a bump in the road that made the goldfish splash about in his bowl. Slow down, please, shouted the goldfish. After that, Cynthia slowed down and watched carefully for the bumps. Hmm, she's starting to care about this goldfish? They passed a cat who eyed the goldfish hungrily. Oh my, said the goldfish. I don't like the way that cat is looking at me. Cynthia crossed the street. They passed some boys playing ball. Hey, be careful, Cynthia shouted. Thank you, said the goldfish. She's watching out for him. They came to a pet store. Would you like something to eat, Cynthia asked. It would be so kind, said the goldfish. She, then she went in and bought some goldfish food. Isn't that cute? They wait out. She, goldfish is waiting outside with a little dog. They walked under the hot sun, and Cynthia placed her poncho over the bowl to shade the fish. That's really nice. At last, they arrived at the lake. They sat and watched the sunset together. It's late, said the goldfish. Yes, it is, replied Cynthia. Let's go home now, Marigold. What do you think of that? She ended up liking her goldfish. I think so. And oh, the color orange. This is our craft we're gonna make. As I told you, one of my favorite things, good old monarch butterfly. So this is a craft that most of it is cut out. This makes it very simple. When you get your bag, come and pick out your bag and you're gonna get a, the background paper. Flip this around like that. You're gonna get the background paper then inside your bag, you get another bag. Pretty much the only thing you're gonna need with this craft is glue, a glue stick or liquid glue, whichever one you pre prefer to use. So you're gonna get a little bit of paint and you're already gonna get your 
background butterfly. And little pipe cleaners. You can make them curly if you want. I'll show you that when I'm when I'm done. But then you're going to get the different parts of the wings. So if you notice on my sample, the lighter part of the wings, now you're going to have to make sure you kind of follow. It's kind of a little bit like a puzzle. So there's where that one goes. And then the upper wing, there's that one. And then this one. And this one. It's the beginnings of our monarch butterfly. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to glue those pieces on, and we're going to wait to add it to our background because we're going to be doing a little bit more with it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some glue on there. And I'm going to pay, put it on, kind of try to center it because you want the, the black outline which is what our monarch butterfly looks like. And I'm going to take this, the bottom wing, because it fits right there. Actually, I have it wrong. Like that. Actually, I have it wrong. There it is. Hello. So, kind of, if you may need to look at mine to kind of get that correct, how the wings are going to go. I'm going to put glue there. See, they kind of fit together, the shapes. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. I'm going to do this side then. I've been seeing so many monarchs flying around outside. It seems like there's a lot of them this year, which is wonderful. Their favorite thing is milkweed, and we seem to have a, quite a bit of it outside. And we are trying to grow some more wildflowers outside. The monarch butterflies have been out there a lot, but they really love milkweed. And milkweed has a flower that actually smells really nice. corners a little bit. So there's this portion. Now if you I'm gonna kind of curl, I'm kind of twisting these to make it a little curly, a little antenna. Be gentle because there's not a whole lot of paper and you could easily rip that so be careful trying to twist it like that. So I kind of like doing that but you notice if you really look at an actual monarch they have little white dots and for that part I'm giving you some white. This is tempera paints, and I'm probably giving you way more than you need, and I'm going to give you a little piece of black paper just to practice. You get black paper, and you'll get a little, and some Q-tips. So you're going to practice, because you just want to dot. You don't want to make a big mess. See, I'm just dotting on the black, because that is what you're going to do all around the all around the butterfly, around the wings, not in the body part. I've noticed if you really look at a monarch, the, the white is around the edges and a little bit not by the face. So I'm going to go all around, I'm going to dot it. It's kind of fun making these little dots. And you can go onto the orange a little bit. That's okay. Like even in the, in the corners of the wings, I put I didn't I put more dots. So that's what I, when I really examined a monarch, I saw that that's really what they have. And then their dots kind of end like that. I don't go all the way up by the face, although I put some just right there. I'm going to go around the bottom of this one. And I'm sure if you added more or did them a little bit differently, it's still going to come out looking great. So we can add like one or two more by the face. So there we are. Okay, now I would kind of set this to the side and let the paint dry. 
it should dry pretty quickly. It's tempera paint. You can kind of give it a little air and let it dry. Now, while that's drying, take your background. And if you notice on my sample, I have flowers on mine. Now, I left them white on this one. You can leave them white, and we have some really nice, cute buttons that happen to be, of course, the color orange. But think about it. Um, what color would look good with an orange, what, like a flower that would have an orange center? I was thinking maybe a light pink or a purple might look really pretty. So with my second sample that I'm showing you how to make, I'm going to take my flowers. And I think on this portion, I'm going to um, color them. I thought they might look pretty, not just white. And of course, you also have leaves and they can be glued onto your stem. I'm going to do the flowers first though, then we'll add the leaves. And I'm going to take one moment to step away. And this can be done with anything. Crayon, marker. I just happened to find a crayon that I like the color. So I'm going to use it like a pinkish crayon. It's actually called lavender. Perfect. So I'm going to take my flowers and I'm going to color them. I don't want it to just be white on this one. There were like a bunch of flowers and they look the same. You can make them all different colors if you like. I kind of like them to look like they came from the same growing area patch of flowers so they would be the same color. But you can make these any color you like because it's your project. And then each one you can glue at the top of a stem. So that's what I'm going to do after I color it. I'm going to glue it to the top of the stem, like so. I'm going to take the second one and color it. It's easier to color before it's glued on because that way you, if you go out of the lines it's not as big of a deal. Makes it easier to kind of color it. Okay. Put a little glue on the back of that one. last one. I was thinking yellow would look really pretty I think with the orange center. Or like I said I just left mine white before but eh, I kind of like coloring a little bit. I was looking at that after and I was like ah eh, they oh I just broke my crayon. That would look nice with a little color added on. any color you like. Okay, I'm going to put that there. Now, that's what we have so far. So now I'm going to add my leaves. They can be anywhere you like. And I kind of like, I'm going to make these a little more three-dimensional. I'm going to fold them and just put the glue in the curve of the leaf, like in the, like where you folded it in half. Because so I'm going to make mine look a little more three-dimensional. I might even curl my, my petals of my flower up a little bit to make it kind of be off the page. Now this one's somewhat flat, but this is kind of fun to do. If you want to, I, you, maybe don't put the glue on the whole petal. See how that looks kind of neat? Like it's coming off the page a bit. I'm going to do the same thing with this leaf. See how I, I kind of folded it in where it would be the line of the leaf, and then I'm just putting a little glue on the edge so I can kind of have it stick up a bit, like looking three-dimensional. Kind of looks neat when the, the leaf kind of comes off the page. So I'm going to finish up and put all my leaves on in the same way.
You don't have to use them all if you don't like. If it makes it easier, you can kind of fold them more when the glue's dry. There's my flowers. Now, in your bag, you also have three adhesive buttons. Adhesive, do you know what that means? That means they have a little sticker on the back that you can t pull off. So you don't have to put glue on these. There's a little sticker on the back. And then you can add that into your center. Just like so. I kind of like the way that come that came out. Or, you know, maybe you want to use these buttons for another project and just color the centers. That's up to you how you want to do it. Okay. So, there we are. There's my flowers. Now I'm going to look and see what my butterfly is looking like. Now, if you notice, this butterfly was cut folded in half. And just like my flowers, I kind of want my butterfly to stand up a little bit off the page. So what I'm going to do is he's still a little bit wet. Truly let it dry all the way, everyone. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm going to do this a little sooner just for the sake of getting it done so you can see what it looks like. But notice how I'm just putting the glue in the middle. Make sure you put enough because you want it to stick. And I'm going to push it flat at first, especially because I've got um, the paint on there. So I'm going to kind of go like this. Might have to flatten it a little more later. And then I'm going to kind of fold my butterfly, just kind of make his wings stand up a little bit. Kind of folding it a little bit like this, curving it. A little easier when the paint's dry, but. And then there you go. Somewhat three dimensional monarch butterfly. I'm sure yours will turn out much better than mine. And here's my sample again. I could kind of play with this one a little more. See, I, I did have this originally. It's kind of fun like that. I can go like that and it's very well glued to the paper. This one I'll kind of show you a little more of how I would... Uh, yeah, once it's really glued, you can really manipulate the wings. You know, make them curve. This was flattened for a while because I had it in storage. This was a sample I made before. But see how it looks kind of neat when it's kind of coming off the paper? Almost looks like a real butterfly, huh? So you can do anything you like with that. So I'd love to see what you come up with. So please, if you can, share your finished project with us on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. We would love to see what you come up with. And then be careful, don't make a mess with the paint. You could probably put newspaper down if you're worried about making a mess, but this shouldn't be too messy. You're being pretty, I mean you have, and you'll probably have extra paint if you want to do another little project with the paint. It's pretty secure in this little cup with the lid. So I hope you enjoyed that project and definitely share it with us. Bye for now. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story time and I hope you come back for our next one. And if you could, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and definitely follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.